Hey! My name is Nils Johansson, here is a story about my life. It started when I was born on December 16, 1863 in Svalit, Unio. I was the fourth child of nine children. My father's name was Johan Johansson and he was born in 1825 in Berg, Unio. My mother's name was Margarita Katharina Johansdatter but she was called Greta Kaiser. She was born in 1832 in Bratby, Vannas. I have my roots around Umeå and the surrounding area, but also some very exciting family lines back to Sweden's oldest documented family, which is called Buraton. I also come from the noble family, Stake, already in the seventh generation. The Stake family, which can be traced back to the 1250s in Hamburg, Germany. Let me tell you more about my father Johan Johansson. He grew up in a large family with 13 siblings. He was 13 years old when his mother passed away. He and his siblings had to take on a great deal of responsibility early in life. When my father was 20 years old, he applied for a job as a soldier and was accepted as a soldier in the village of Svalit. After a few years as a soldier, he is unfortunately fired due to injuries, fortunately he was allowed to stay in the soldier's house. My father has time to be 31 years old before he meets his love, my mother Greta Kaiser. She was only 24 years old when they got married, seven years younger than my father. In the little house nine children were born, four daughters and five sons and one of these children was me. We had a very tough time, like so many other families at this time, the days were spent getting food and supplies. We were happy that the house was close to the Umeå River, we could catch fish that we could eat for dinner. Three cows and a horse had help in the daily work that would support the family. We were happy, but the house got tighter the bigger the family got. My father was good at carpentry, as he had helped so many to build timbered wooden houses in the village. He decided to build bigger houses and also rebuild the stable. Dad had almost finished building, when a shocking message reached us. The authorities had made the decision to build the new railway exactly where our house stood. We had to abandon the house and move to another cottage further away. An accident seldom comes alone. During the move, my mother fell ill and passed away in the autumn of 1879. My father had lost his father early and now it was my turn to lose my mother early in life. I was only 15 years old. My life went on, and a few years later when I became a young man, I met the love of my life, Anna Sophia Johansdatter. We got married in 1886 when I was 23 years old in Umeå County. That day was unforgettable. Anna Sophia was born on April 11, 1859 in Hackmark, Umeå. She was almost five years older than me when we got married. Anna Sophia also has very exciting roots. She is descended just like me from the old and much talked about Buraton, but also from Anders Pedersen in Grubb, born in 1470 and ancestor of the famous Umeå family Grubb. Sophia's mother, also my mother-in-law, was named Katharina Eriksdotter, born in 1834 in Sunnentorp, Umeå. She lived until the year 1915. Sophia's father was Johann Larsson, born 1812 in Oberboda, Umeå, he died in 1870. Anna Sophia and I searched for accommodation and found Ries Merleden, near the village of Castjo, Umeå. It was a crown tax home and the price was 2,230 Swedish krona. In addition, we undertook to take care of the previous owner's widow. I immediately started renovating the house. We fixed up to the cattle house and soon the homestead was very pleasant. We bought some cows and a horse. I cleared more farmland for grazing for the animals, salvaged hay for fodder, harvested the grain from the new farm and ground it into flour in the nearby gourd mill. We were happy. Of course we also had setbacks, a fire ravaged and the old barn burned down and large parts of the house. We were forced to stay on the small part of the house while a new house and barn were built. The small farm was no longer sufficient to support the growing family. 
I therefore decided to build a smithy with a hearth, bellows, an anvil and a workbench. When the house was ready, I started making sledges, loads and work carts, which I sold to farmers in the neighboring villages. How many wagon wheels I made in Rismerladen is difficult to estimate, but I became very famous in the area for my wagon wheels and even today there is talk of my skill as a smith. Life went on at Rismerladen. We had eight nice children over the years. Hilma Sophia was the name of our firstborn child, who unfortunately fell ill and died only two years old. It was a very difficult time in life. Then came the children Johann Albin, Nils Magnus, Eric Anton, Per Arvid, Anna Nicolina, Carl Frederick, Arctil's sister Olor Falfred. The years passed quickly and the children grew up. The sons took the surname Nilsson and looked for work outside the home. Johann and Magnus got jobs in the sawmill and construction industry in Umeå and the surrounding area. The daughter Anna moved to Castro where she married a farmer, Carl became a workshop owner in Blowmaker, but studied to be a priest, but fell ill and died in 1921 only 25 years old. Our youngest son Valfred emigrated to America in 1926. Anna Sophia and I had a total of 32 grandchildren together. From our son Johann we had the grandchildren Anna Greta, Braw, Leonard, Margit, Folk, Karl Eric, and Laza K. From our son Magnus we got the grandchildren Oren, Ragnar, Claes, Astrid, and Ak. From our son Eric we got the grandchildren Elvi, Ellis, and Barbro. From our daughter Anna we had the grandchildren Ragnar, Gunilla, Anne Marie, Miles, and Doris. From our son Carl we had the grandchildren Iris, Doris, Lillian, Claes Vidor, Carl Gerhard, Irene, Gjela K, Mai and Nils Eric. Our youngest son Valfred has given us grandchildren Irene, Linda and Mao Reis. In her old age, Anna Sophia and I become increasingly tired and fractured. We decided to leave Rhys Merladen to his son Eric as he lived in his own farm not far from us. My beloved Anna Sophia died on March 23, 1941, 81 years old and I myself died on August 5, 1945, also at the age of 81 years. The last relative who later owned Rhys Merladen was our grandson Ellis who owned Rhys Merladen until 1964. Today there is not much left of Rhys Merladen. You can find part of the house foundation, but most of it is overgrown with forest today. But the memory still lives on and even today you can hear people remember and tell about Nils Johansson. Our descendants are today scattered in Europe, America and elsewhere around the world. Many of our descendants have had successful careers in sports, culture and in their professional roles. We can be proud of several successful athletes, musicians and professionals who have been recognized in various ways. My wife Anna Sophia and I never knew how big and valuable our family would be. We are so proud to be the ancestors of all these descendants. We are also grateful that there is a very own family group on Facebook that has gathered all my and Anna Sophia's descendants. This is what our family grave looks like in Bakken Cemetery. This is where my beloved wife Anna Sophia and I rest. I'm so happy to share my life story with you. Thanks for listening.